As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm coming to you again from the Mount of Olives, just outside the ancient city of Jerusalem. Isn't that site beautiful? It is just spectacular to stand here and look over at the old city of Jerusalem where so many prophecies have already been fulfilled. But the future will also have a lot of fulfilled prophecy, including Jesus setting up his millennial kingdom from right here in the city of Jerusalem. But the Bible is loaded with prophecies that are in the process of being fulfilled right now before our eyes. One of my favorite places for those prophecies is 2 Timothy chapter 3. Really, it's a text that most people don't deem to be prophecy, but it is. Because in that verse, chapter 3, verse 1, the Holy Spirit says, know this about the last days. And then he begins to describe events that are going to take place in the last days. You know, when I was a kid, we played a game called tag. Maybe you played it too. And somebody would touch you and they'd say, tag, you're it. And that meant it was your time to play. Well, that's us. The Holy Spirit has pointed his finger at us and he said, tag, you're it. Now it's your time to play the game. This is an end times game and you're the one in the game. That's who we are. That's the time period that we live in. So I say, tag, you're it. How do you play the game in the end of the age? How do you live successfully in a world that really seems to be morally spinning out of control when nonsense has become commonplace? How do you survive that? What do you do with your kids? What about your grandchildren? What about the future for them? What does the Bible promise and what can we do to assure a good future for ourselves and for our families? That's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner. Thank you for letting me come right into your space. I've been waiting for you. And today you and I are going to return to Matthew chapter 24 to see the signs Jesus said we would see before the end of the age, just before he returns for the church. My friend, Jesus is coming and he gave us signs to alert us to where we are on God's prophetic calendar. And my friends, we're almost to the end of the age and Jesus is coming again. But we have covered so much in these programs. I know you cannot remember at all. So I want you to order the whole series, which is called Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. It is 10 parts. These programs are jam packed with revelation from Matthew chapter 24 about the signs we're going to see just before Jesus comes and the series comes with a study guide. I love my study guides. I put so much work into these study guides and I do it for you. They're filled with the Greek words, the points, the principles, all the history in these programs, all of it is in these study guides. And if you go to our website, to our store, you'll see that there's all kinds of study guides for you to use. You should go and take a look. And we're also offering you my book, By the same name, signs you'll see just before Jesus comes, page after page after page that elaborates and expounds on what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 about the signs we're going to see just before Jesus comes. And we're also offering you right now my book based on 2 Timothy chapter 3, also a prophetic book about what will happen in society at the end of the age. Do you feel like society is going crazy? things around you that you would have never thought you would see in your life. Well, my friend, it's just getting started. It's going to get even more bizarre as times go by because the Holy Spirit said the end of the age will be perilous, but we can survive it. We can even thrive in it. We can flourish in it because we have the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why I wrote this book, Last Day's Survival Guide. You got to put on your boots, grab your Bible and get it ready to march like soldiers to the end of the age 
The subtitle says this is a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. My friends, we're going to go out of here in power and glory, not defeated. And we need to know how to thrive in these times. And that's why I wrote this book. And if you don't have it, please order it today. And remember that if you need prayer, we're here for you. And we want to pray for you. We're waiting for the phone to ring or for your email to show up in our inbox, and we will immediately begin to pray with you for God to move mightily in your life. We believe that, and we believe that when we pray with you, things are going to happen and things are going to change. So call us or send us your email. But hey, reach for your Bible. We always use the Bible in this program. And today we're going to return to Matthew 24, verse 3, which is our anchor verse. Jesus was on the Mount of Olives with his disciples, and Matthew 24, verse 3 tells us, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, his disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And in this verse, we've seen there are five key words, the word when, the word what, the word sign, the word end, and the word world. You have to understand these words to know exactly what the disciples were asking Jesus. First, they said, when shall these things be the word when? The Greek word pote describes specific or concrete information. They were seeking a concrete answer. Lord, tell us explicitly, when will these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? The word what is the little Greek word t. It describes a most minute, minuscule detail. They were being very precise. Lord, tell us exactly. Tell us in the smallest detail. Tell us exactly what will be the sign of thy coming. And the word sign here in Greek is singular. Jesus is going to give them many signs, but they were just asking for one. But the word sign is the Greek word simeon the very Greek word used to describe a sign along the road when you're traveling to a new destination. The purpose of the sign is to help you know where you are in your journey and how much further you have to go. That's important because it tells us what they were asking. Lord, tell us what will be the signs how will we know where we are on this journey to the end of the age? How will we know how close we are to the end of the world? But wait, the word world in Greek is the word ionas. It should not be translated world. It is the Greek word for an age. The word end, the Greek word suntaleus, describes the closure, the summation, the wrap up. The disciples prophetically understood that every age eventually winds down, it comes to a close, and they knew this age was going to run its course and then it would end, and then it will give birth to another age, which the Bible calls the Great Tribulation. But they were saying, Lord, how will we know when this current age has come to its conclusion? And now Jesus begins to answer them in verse 4, and he says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, so worldwide deception will be one sign at the end of the age. Then in verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. This describes deception in the church. Then when you come to verse 6, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We've already covered that. Verse 7, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. We've already covered that. For there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. We've already covered that. Verse 8, all of these are the beginning of sorrows. We've already covered that. Then verse 9 and verse 10, and they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. We've already covered that. This depicts worldwide persecution at the end of the age. Then verse 11, which we covered in the last program, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And today we come to verse 12. And in Matthew 24, verse 12, Jesus said, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. This verse describes a coldness coming to many in the church. How do we know this depicts the church? Because the word love is the Greek word agape. It describes God's love. The use of agape in this verse could only depict the love of believers for God and for one another. And this word agape used in this verse indicates there will be a waning of love toward God 
and a waning of love between believers at the very end of the age, and much of it will be due to iniquity. That's what Jesus says. Well, what does the word iniquity mean? The word iniquity is the Greek word anomia, from the word nomos, which is the Greek word for law, but if you put an A in front of it, it cancels it. It is lawless or without law. It describes a lawless attitude. And Jesus said this lawlessness will abound. The word abound, the Greek word plethuno, which means to increase to maximum capacity, which means lawlessness will escalate and proliferate at the end of the age to maximum capacity capacity. And Jesus says the love of many, and again, because the word love is the Greek word agape, we know particularly he's referring to the love of Christians, to the love of believers. He says it will wax cold. Wax cold is a Greek word which describes cold air or a breeze that cools and eventually freezes. Wow. We're going to come back to all of this in just a moment and elaborate a little bit more. But look at verse 13. Jesus says, and he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. What does that mean? He that endures. Well, the word endures is a form of the Greek word hupomeno. Listen to this. It means to remain in one spot or to keep a position. Listen to me, because my friends, if you want to experience the saving, preserving, delivering power of God, you've got to do this. He that endures to the end, the same will be saved. And this word endures means to keep your spot or to keep your position, to resolve to maintain territory gained. In a military sense, it pictures soldiers ordered to remain in their positions even in the face of opposition. It means to defiantly stick it out regardless of pressures mounted against it. It depicts staying power, hanging their power. It is the attitude that holds out, holds on, outlasts, perseveres, and hangs in there, never giving up and surrendering to surrender to obstacles and turning down every opportunity to quit. It pictures one who, though he is under a heavy load, refuses to bend, to break, or surrender because he's convinced that the territory, promise, or principle under assault rightly belongs to him. My friends, Jesus says, if you want to experience preserving power, delivering power all the way to the end of the age, then you have to stick by the Bible and refuse to bend from it. You're not going to surrender. You're going to turn down every opportunity to modify your faith to the world around you. And Jesus says, if you will do that, the same shall be saved. It's talking about you. The word saved here means to save, to heal, to deliver, or to persevere. And here Jesus says, if you'll stick with the Bible, it will enable you to be preserved all the way to the end. But hey, let's go back to verse 12. And in verse 12, Jesus says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But here is what is so important. The word iniquity in Greek is plural, which means this depicts a time when lawlessness will escalate all around the earth. Now, I want to read to you from page 139 in my book, Signs You'll See, just before Jesus comes. And I want you to listen to what this word iniquity means. In Greek, the word iniquity actually describes lawlessness. A literal translation of this verse could be, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will wax cold. The word lawless is plural, which tells us this lawlessness will escalate around the world at the end of the age. It depicts the actions of an individual or a group of people or even a nation or even an entire society or culture that has chosen to live apart from God's laws and principles. Though this person or group previously followed biblical laws and principles, they elected to forge their own way of doing things that are not founded on the principles of God's word, thus they are lawless or giving their own newly evolving principles to be their new foundation instead of living on truths that are portrayed in Scripture. That's what lawlessness is. It is a mass divergence from biblical truth to find another way to live. Or Jesus says at the very end of the age, people will depart from the teaching of the Bible. That is precisely 
what it means. That is amazing. So here we find at the very end of the age, there is going to be a worldwide rejection of biblical truth. And my friends, we are witnessing this right in front of us. Instead of holding on to the truth they once previously believed, truth that guided them, they have elected to move away from it and forge a new way to go into the future. The Apostle Paul refers to this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3, where he says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. It's talking about the coming of the Lord. Except there come a falling away first. A falling away is the Greek word apostasia. It describes a revolt, a political rebellion. The word first describes first in order in the first place to begin with, or the Apostle Paul says, before Jesus comes again first, before that happens, there's going to be a revolt, a mutiny against the authority of God and against biblical truth. And he calls it a great falling away. Listen to what I write on page 140 of this book, Signs You'll See, just before Jesus comes. Listen to this. Paul described a great falling away in the last days. In this verse, Paul prophetically described a falling away that will transpire at the very end of the age. In that hour, the mystery of iniquity will be unleashed full steam in an attempt to lead the entire planet into various forms of deception. Once the church has been caught up to meet the Lord in the air, which you can read about in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. The lost world will reject God altogether and substitute him with the son of perdition who is otherwise known as the Antichrist. But what about this falling away that will occur before all these events take place on the prophetic timeline? The words falling away are the very same word used in the old Greek New Testament Septuagint to depict a mass mutiny against authority. And by using this word, the Apostle Paul, who was brilliant and who was a linguist and who knew exactly what the word meant, said society would revolt against the authority of God himself at the conclusion of the age. Both Jesus and Paul prophesied a great falling away will occur in the last days. It will be a worldwide rebellion against God. That is precisely what Jesus prophesied and what the Apostle Paul prophesied in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. It is amazing how accurate the Bible is. Wow. This moral confusion, this throwing away of biblical principles and making a brand new way of their own making, Jesus prophesied it in Matthew 24 verse 12. And he says, when you see this, this is a sign that you are colliding with the end of the age. And Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 12, this iniquity will abound, abound. That word abound, the Greek word plethuno means to increase. It will increase. It could even be translated to flourish. Iniquity will flourish to grow at maximum capacity. That is amazing. Listen to what I write on page 143 of this book, Signs You'll See, just before Jesus comes. The word abound is from a Greek word that means to increase, flourish, and overflow. From a sociological standpoint, this very Greek word was used to depict masses of people. So the context indicates masses will lack moral understanding. The word masses presents the right idea for this abounding iniquity that Jesus spoke of is a state of affairs that will be developing worldwide at the end of the age. As this occurs, lawlessness and a lack of moral understanding will abound among the masses and society will slide further and further into rebellion against God. In Matthew 24, verse 12, Jesus was prophesying of a time that would come when immoral thinking, immoral believing, and immoral acting would affect nearly every facet of society. It will be a time of great moral confusion that leads to widespread immoral behaviors. All of that is in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. My friends, Jesus was correct, but wait, he goes on. And he says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The words wax cold 
means to grow cold, to be chilled, or to progressively be chilled by a poisonous wind. A wind is blowing, and that wind is intended to chill people in their faith. Let me read to you from page 145 of my book, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. Now, this is just amazing. Hold on to your seat. The words wax cold are a translation of a Greek word that means to progressively become cold-hearted. It depicts people who have become numbed. Do you know anybody that's become numbed? It depicts people who become numbed, perhaps, by personal sin, by the condoning of sin in others, or by a sinful environment. Perhaps they become cold spiritually by allowing the moral changes in the world around them to negatively affect their own standards. The lawlessness that abounds more and more may have rubbed off on them as well. To maintain our fire for Jesus in these last times, we must choose to withdraw from ungodly influences that numb us and cause us to wax cold. It is essential that we stay close to the fires of the Spirit if we're going to stay passionate in our love for Jesus. If we make any other choice, we run the risk of allowing the lawlessness that is running amok in the world to affect us and to cause our love to go cold. My friend, you do not want to wax cold in your love for Jesus or in your love for other believers. And Jesus prophesied there will be a tendency at the very end of the age, even for many. Notice Jesus uses the word many in Greek. It describes multitudes. He's talking about believers. We know that because he uses the word love, the Greek word agape, a word that would only be used to describe the love of Christians. And Jesus says even many Christians will be affected by a lawless attitude that's going to proliferate at the end of the age, and it will cause them to grow cold. It is a wind blowing, which is intended to chill the church and lure the church to walk away from their firm commitment to the Bible and to begin to be more open-minded. My friends, keep your brain in your head. Don't be so open-minded that your brain falls out. God gave you a brain. He gave you a Bible. You need to read it. You need to believe it. And you need to establish your life and your family on the principles of the Bible. And if you depart from the Bible, it is the first step to growing cold in your passion for Jesus. And Jesus said this would be a tendency even of Christians in the very end of the age, Matthew 24, verse 12. And because iniquity, lawlessness will abound, it will proliferate, it will escalate to maximum capacity, even the love of many believers will wax cold. Don't let that be you. Remember what Jesus said? He said, the one who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. That word endure means to hold on to your territory, hold on to your position, refuse to move. You've got to decide if the world around me moves, I'm not moving from the Bible. I'm sticking with truth to the end of the age. That will preserve you. It will deliver you. It will save you. It will heal you. It will do everything for you. Don't move away from the Bible. But the winds will blow in the end of the age, trying to get people to loosen their grip on truth. Don't do it. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Sometimes Christian leaders can be sensationalistic about their beliefs in end-time events. But scaring people with Bible prophecy should not be the goal. God, in His great love, has chosen to inform us explicitly about the last days so that we can be prepared. In this 10-part series, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes, Rick Renner teaches logically and reasonably about the signs we'll see just before Jesus comes. Jesus' words in Matthew 24 are both revealing and alarming. But nothing in the Bible was written to scare us. It was written to prepare us. God is faithful to inform us about what we need to know to live in this last season of this age. This series will answer the questions. Where are we in time? What signs will we see to let us know we are coming to the end of the age? What is the ultimate sign that Jesus is about to come again? This eye-opening 10-part series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20. In addition, right now you can order the companion books, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes for just $15 and Last Day's Survival Guide for only $25. There is so much information in the New Testament about end-time events, 
that we cannot claim ignorance on this subject. And the scriptures tell us how to live victoriously through this end time season. Don't miss this special offer, the series, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes, and the companion books, Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes, and Last Day's Survival Guide. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner, and right behind me through this wonderful park is one of our Moscow Good News Church satellite churches. You know, everyone needs a good church they can call their spiritual home. As a ministry, we're believing for revival of the Bible in people's lives, and to have a church you can call your home is so very important. For decades, we have been working in the countries of the former Soviet Union. And we have started churches in Riga, the capital of Latvia, Moscow, the capital of Russia, and Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Every city where we have opened a church has brought its own similar and unique challenges, but the goal has always been the same, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have also started an online church that is touching people in countries we have never been to and people we could never reach. People all over the world need the gospel and we are so glad that our online church is an answer for them. After we dedicated the Moscow Good News Church building, we started taking churches to other regions of Moscow and now we're opening satellite churches all over this wonderful city. Moscow is huge and we need to take the gospel to as many people as possible in our wonderful city. One way to do this is by opening satellite churches so the people all over Moscow have a good spiritual home. If you're one of our partners, I want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart. Spreading the gospel is so important. People need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ just like you did one day. If you're not one of our partners, I want to invite you to become one. Would you please consider supporting us financially so we can continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the globe. It is so important. Please call or go online to renner.org to give through your generous financial support we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives around the world. My friend, I want you to have this brand new series called Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes. You need to hear it and hear it and hear it. Get this truth into you. And it comes with the study guide. The two of these together are so powerful. And we're also offering you my book called Signs You'll See Just Before Jesus Comes, page after page after page about the words of Jesus in Matthew 24, where Jesus gives us the signs we'll see just before he comes. You need this book because you need to understand the signs that Jesus enumerated in Matthew chapter 24. And we're also offering you my book based on 2 Timothy chapter 3, where the Apostle Paul prophesies what will happen in society at the end of the age. He describes it as perilous times. That's why the subtitle is A Scriptural Handbook to Prepare You for These Perilous Times, Last Day's Survival Guide. My friends, grab your boots, grab your Bible, and stick with your Bible. We're going to march through this season in the power of the Holy Spirit and with the promises of Scripture behind us. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that we do not have to wax cold even if we're living in the end of the age. Lord, we want to draw near to you and to your fire. Keep us ablaze. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.